Hello everybody, welcome to my knitting journal. My name is Joji, I am a knitter and pattern designer from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I like to record these little videos sharing what I am working on and my latest um, design processes and projects. I hope you are very well. I wasn't sure if I would have the time to record today because I've been packing. We are going on a family holiday tomorrow and I, I am doing pretty good with luggage. I tend to leave that to the last minute, but um, the most important part is done and I realized that I had about an hour to do this so here I am. I don't want to leave it too long because then I miss sharing parts of the processes with you all and I really enjoy hearing what you think about what I'm working on. Let's see. So today is um, July 13. It's a Thursday 2023. I am not with my mom today. She's coming a little bit later for tea time, but I thought that it would be too dark by the time she was here. So I decided to record without her, even though she has one of my works in progress to show you. Um, so first I want to thank you uh, all for all the comments that you left in my latest video with my mom. You know how special it is when mom comes. I think that a podcast where two people share with each other their projects and their notes, it's a lot more fun and definitely more dynamic than me, myself, sitting here in my office. Sometimes Perry, my dog, is here. Today she's outside chewing on a dog, on a bone. But yes, you all left the nicest comments and I appreciate that. Also, thank you for claiming that I published the Susurrus pullover. If you missed the last video, mom showed a design of mine that she made. The design was featured in Pom Pom magazine and it is not available as an individual pattern yet. So yeah, everyone, well, not everyone, <laughs> but a lot of people uh, left a comment there in the YouTube video saying, yes, Hohi, you should publish this pattern. So I went ahead and I emailed Pom Pom to see if there were any rules or any guidelines that kept me from uh, publishing the pattern. And unfortunately there is a, quite a difficult one for me especially and it is that Pom Pom does not allow us designers to use their photography for our patterns and I did not hold on Perry wants to come inside hi Perry um, and I was saying I had not photographed my sample before sending it off to Pom Pom. Therefore, I don't have any photos of my own, which is keeping me from publishing the pattern in my shop. So I contacted them to see if they still had the sample so that I could take my own photography. And they said that they still had it uh, in their warehouse so I will get the sample in August when I go to Maryland for the classes that I'm teaching at Magpie. And hopefully I will be able to come home <laughs> with the sample, take some new photographs on this model instead, and I will be able to offer you guys that pattern um, as a, an individual pattern. I hope that the sample is still in good shape. I, I think that it should. Um, so whenever that happens, I hope that you know that that's the reason why it's taken me a bit longer to publish. It's because I have to do my own photography. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it about Susurrus. Um, okay, I have one finished object that wasn't even, uh, I think it wasn't even a work in progress last time I recorded and it's a little pair of socks. Today is going to be all about socks. 
and these are my new my new design these are the fifth and last pattern that will be part of my fluffy fibers <laughs> fluffy fibers collection that's coming in august there you go it's a thick um, slipper style sock and it's it can be worked in no time i made both of these socks i started them one day and i finished them the next so I call them one weekend socks because you can make them in one weekend. I wanted uh, to make them especially thick and quick for this reason. Uh, the collection has some like long, long term projects like the sweaters. And so I wanted to have also, uh, how do you call it? like an immediate satisfaction or instant gratification design too. So to make these socks, I will show them again when the collection comes out, but to make these socks, you need one skein of DK weight yarn. And in my sample, I used a speckle yarn from Suburban Stitcher. This is her Suburban Stitcher Decay and the color is Recoleta, so you can see the speckles in black, in red, a little bit of pink and brown. And also, I, because this is a Fluffy Fibers collection, I decided to pair it with mohair. So I am carrying mohair along with the yarn, so you can see how fluffy and soft they are. But, so I, I talked about Shibui knits, Shibui Still Cloud being discontinued. Uh, I talked about it either my previous video or the one before that. And it's a company that I really liked. I especially really liked their mohair silk because it has 40% silk and I think it's one of the softest and like most luxurious mohair blends that I had tried and now it you cannot find it anymore but I still have a lot of it in my stash and so while it doesn't really make sense to work with a yarn that is discontinued and that nobody can get it does make sense to use it to me at least as a secondary yarn uh, in this design and so that's what I chose. I chose one skein of Shibui Knits Silk Cloud. What's pecu peculiar about these skeins is that they are not 50 gram skeins, they are, they are 25 gram skeins. So they have like an intermediate yardage, they have 300 yards or 330. So when I made the math, I realized that even if I am using a skein that is smaller than what most dyers now sell, I would still have some leftover mohair if I was using just one strand of mohair. And who wants to waste some mohair? I know that you can use leftovers, but to me, a partial skein of 25 grams, it's so small that I probably wouldn't, I probably would even forget that I had those leftovers or not be able to use them. So instead of using one strand of the mohair, I used two strands of the mohair. So I wound up my skein and I used one, both ends. So I used one strand of the decay weight and two strands of the mohair. And I had literally maybe like five yards left over which is great because this is the large size. I graded this for a small and a large. This is the large, as you can see, they are not small socks at all. And my foot, I am a US nine and a half, ten, 10, and these are kind of a little long for me. So I am kind of sure that most women fit are going to you will have enough mohair if you use one skein of shibui for any size and any length as you can see these are short socks and they are also worked from the toe up 
So another strategy would be that you weigh the yarn and you use half of the yarn for one sock and half of the yarn for the other sock. Um, and if you don't want to be so tight, what you can do is use a 50 gram skein, which is anyway what's, what most dyers have. And, um, and then you are sure that you'll have plenty. I want to check, I want to check these little balls that I brought from Denmark how much um, yardage they carry. So these are also 25 grams. And this is the knitting for olive mohair. But these are 225 meter balls. So I think that if you have only one ball of this, you won't have enough yardage to use both ends instead you'll have to use just one strand or two balls but to be sure i'm going to see i'm going to check against one of the shibui and one of uh let's see what is this i'm trying to find a, a regular dyer a regular dyer's mohair Okay, I'm back. Sorry that I left you. So the knitting for Olive is 25 gram ball and 225 meters. The Shibui was, or is, but uh, you cannot find it in their shop anymore. You probably can find it in stores or people destashing it or in your own stash. This is 25 grams, 330 yards. So it's same weight, but it's thinner than the knitting for olive. And then this is a uh, Nindy Dyer's mohair. This is Madeline Tosh impression. And this is 420 yards. Right, so it's not even that much. So this is also a kind of a thicker, kind of a thicker mohair than the, that from other dyers. So as you can see, mohair can vary a lot in yardage and weight and thickness. So I don't think the results are actually that different if you ask me regarding fabric, but I do think that yardage varies a lot. So uh, check your yardage if you're substituting, not for these socks, but um, if you're substituting for anything else, check the yardage because even if you have the same amount of skeins, as you see, they, they have a very different uh, output. By the way, Today I am wearing my super simple summer sweater and I was inspired to wear this because my friend Tracy from the Grocery Girls recently finished her own super simple summer sweater. She used the same yarn that I used, the Rosa Pomar's Mungo, and I really enjoyed seeing her wearing hers. So I decided to wear mine with my overalls, overalls that I wear every day, especially if I have to work around the house. These are for me the most comfortable, but you can see what the sweater looks like on me. And yes, and I'll talk about this sweater again because it's inspiring one of my works in progress. Um, so I'm going to make this <laughs> the feature pattern of the day, the super simple summer sweater, and you will find a link in the show notes to get the pattern. Um, but there's a lot of sock talk today, a lot of uh, sock chit chat. I already showed you my finished object and last week or the or the one before that, when I finished recording with mom, I realized that I hadn't shown you these guys over here. And these were a pattern that came out also while I was in Italy with Nano. This is a new pair of socks that I designed in collaboration with Madeline Tosh. I'm going to cover my face, there you go. So these 
are very detailed socks, a lot more elaborate than the pattern that I just wrote and they have a lot of story and actually because they came out when I was traveling and I was also publishing two other patterns in the meantime Solare and Soto del Sole the ones that I showed you last week I really couldn't talk much about these socks and I want to tell you everything that happened with these socks so I'm gonna take one out so that you can see the details a little bit better. There you go. There's a very elaborate cable that uh, runs down the front of the sock. And then there's also a lot of smaller rope-like cables that come all the way down all the way down to the back of the heel and there is a gusset and a flat toe okay i'm trying this cinematic effect with my phone i think it looks good but also it's kind of tricky to get the phone to focus where you want. I have to cover my face because I can see my phone constantly <laughs> looking where my face is to make sure it focuses there. But I think I like it. Um, so back to these socks. Last year, I get um, an email from my friends at Madeline Tosh. I work with them many, many times. They've always been super generous with creating colors, especially for me and of you know offering me anything that i need for my work i'm very comfortable working with their bases and colors um i feel like there's always something that is exactly what i was looking for and they yeah and so we've known uh, that i i've known the company as my work colleagues for many years so I get approached at the end of last year asking if I can design a pair of socks with them for this time of the year. I, I believe that this is going this was going to be a sock club, but then it worked out differently. And they wanted me to work with this base, by the way, which is the twist light, if I am correct. And this base, I remember it very well. At the time, Amy was still the dyer behind Madeline Tosh when they launched this yarn. And it was in 2015 when they launched it. And Vera, my colleague and I were in Texas when this happened. So it was their first like proper sock yarn that had some nylon content in it. And we were the first ones to see the palette that they are they were putting out and it was really exciting. And so, yeah, of course I was happy to work with it. And they asked me to select a couple of colors that I thought were good for the theme. The theme of this sock club again i don't know if it's i don't know if it's happening because i haven't checked i didn't keep track of that um, but when we talked about these socks the theme was going to be a road trip so you know i am not that good at getting inspiration or at least color inspiration from a theme like that so i basically chose neutral colors that always suit me and I thought that with a neutral color anything that I wanted to put on that sock would look nice. So I choose four or five colors and then they say oh we can't this color because of this reason and this other color we can't because of that so in the end we have two finalists I don't remember what these two finalists were, but I remember that they were two colors and they were going to bring me the yarn in person in January at VK Live. 
So I get to VK Live and I am waiting for instructions on where to pick the yarn from. And apparently there was um, some issue with the post. Something happened with the mail not arriving in time. So Libby, the person that I was talking to about this project, she said, don't worry, I have some of this yarn in my own stash and I will bring you a skein of Yoko, which I think that you'll like because it's similar to the colors you chose. And it's this color that I ended designing with, which is not a color that I myself would have chosen, but it's a very beautiful color. It has some browns and gray and speckles in a lot of autumnal colors like red and black and brown and i really like it and i think that even when there's so much going on in this colorway the yarn has such a good stitch definition that you can see the cables no problem and i don't think anyone has any problems seeing these cables and i love the way they turned out so here I am in New York with my new yarn and I had already organized my schedule so that I would knit these socks while I was traveling in Norway. If you follow my journeys and my time uh, scale, I went to, Jan to BK Lab in January and from New York, my family and I traveled to Scandinavia for a 10 day family trip. So I wanted a portable project, but I also had all these deadlines and collaborations for this year. And so I thought it was the best idea was to start this right away in New York and bring it with me to Norway and if everything went well, I would have them finished by the end of my trip. Well, everything did not work well. First of all, I wasn't really decided on what the socks were going to look like. So it took me a long time to cast on. Um, anyway, so we start our trip in Norway. First two days I am knitting on this sock. I meet my friend Lotte. We go shopping to to the store where she works at. I get new sock needles. I'm happy with the new sock needles. I'm knitting my sock. I am about to finish my the leg of the sock and we decide to go skiing in Norway with my family. So of course I bring my sock and there's a lot of footage of me knitting on this sock while we are at the ski resort in Norway. And then at the end of the day, we have to go down, get changed, return our ski boots and put on our own boots. And so I put my knitting down in one of the shelves and blah, blah, blah. We go out, you know, the resort closes. We get on the, on the train to go to Bergen, which is a time train and very expensive journey. So you have to be on that specific train and not on a different one. And when I sit down and I say, okay, let's continue my sock. I'm almost at the hill. I don't have my project with me. So I immediately, Creo que no te entiendo. sorry, Siri. I immediately realized that I had left my project behind on one of the shelves where people put their backpacks to put their, their boots on. What can I do? What can I do? Um, I, I start messaging my friends and it's not that I don't care about other projects, but there are other projects that I can leave behind, you know, and I will be very upset because I lost all this work that I put on or I can say, okay, I get it back whenever it's not a problem. But this one in particular, I could not lose it. I could not lose it because the yarn had, it was like a specific base and they had been through some obstacles to get me the yarn and I had a deadline. And so I really had to retrieve it whenever that was, but I had to retrieve this project. 
um, and it wasn't just about the cost of, you know, the materials, which was high because I had the new knitting needles, the yarn, of course, and I had a new project bag that Cassandra had gifted me when, when we were at BK Live. So I was really sad, but also very nervous about not retrieving this project. So I text my friends in Norway and everyone's like, don't worry, Hoki, we'll make the sock turn up. And so I email the resort, my friend Lotte calls them, emails them. And next morning I have an email from them saying, don't worry, Hoki, we will find the sock. Um, just uh, leave it to us. And then, so the guy who was saying, don't worry, Hoki, uh, and he was talking with Lotte, my friend, he checked, I think it was at noon, when some people moved some of their bags, he found my knitting bag, and so he found my sock. But I was on a road trip. <laughs> I was on a road trip myself around Norway. We were moving cities every two days, and so there wasn't really anywhere where I could wait for my sock to arrive, you know? And I didn't know when they were going to ship it, so it was pretty obvious that I was not going to get my my sock back before I left Europe. It really touched me that so many people moved around to found my to find my sock, not just the resort people, but I talked I posted about this on Instagram about me losing my sock and so many people reached out with possible solutions, people offering to go to the resort and pick, pick it themselves. <coughs> people who took it on their hands and they they called the resort and oh, have you seen their socks? Yeah, yeah, we are re we're returning them. My friend Lotte and Anne, uh, of course, um, they were so, so worried and preoccupied with this. After a couple of days, the guy who worked at the resort he mailed the socks to Lotte. So we knew that they were already on their way. And I posted about that, about the sock going to Oslo and I being unable to go to Oslo to pick them up. And even someone said, I am going to be in Oslo this weekend. So if they arrive before I leave, I can take them to you in Stockholm where you're going next, which was just, so generous. Uh, the socks didn't make it before this knitter left Oslo, but I did meet this knitter in Stockholm without planning it. We went to a show, we went to the ABBA museum. And so we are, we asked someone to take our family photo. And this person was the knitter who had offered to bring the socks to me in Stockholm. So I always say the world is a handkerchief. It's so small. Anyway, these dogs were having their own road trip. They stayed at the resort. They wanted to ski a little bit longer. Then they went to Oslo. I came back to Argentina and now it's okay. How do I retrieve these socks? And as soon as I come to Argentina and say something about my socks are in Europe and I need to get them back. And a friend of mine here in Argentina says, I am going to Spain in whatever, and I can bring them back to you in April. So my socks travel from Oslo to Madrid, to a friend of my friend's house. Then my friend of my friend brings the socks to my friend, and then my friend brings them back in her suitcase to me in Argentina. So I couldn't think of a more travel ready sock than this um, road trip inspired socks. Uh, obviously, it's just a cable. When I get poetic in my introductions, I can say, you know, all the paths winding and then converging and then, you know, separating again, which is a nice way to see it. I just wanted to make a nice cable sock. I can't say that this represents anything of 
what happened with the sock, but there's always a story behind our knitting and I find it so fascinating. I find it humbling, overwhelming, heartwarming to know that I have so many friends around the world who are eager to get me back together with my sock. And then whenever I get these things back to me, this is not the first time something like this has happened because <laughs> uh, I am a bit lightheaded. But whenever I get things back, they turn to be so much more special than, you know, just getting the yarn and deliver a sock. It's just so much more than that. And I think this happens with most of our projects. We, I don't want to get very poetic because I am already very poetic when I write and I, I, I try to avoid that when I record these journals, which are very, very true. Uh, and very, very honest, but we do need a lot of things into our knitting. I am sure that this happens to you too, but whenever I think of a project, I can remember what series was on Netflix when I was knitting these socks or where I was traveling through and the people that I knit these socks with. And so, I don't have anything else in my life that it's so full of content as my knitting projects, which I think it's why I will always be a knitter before anything else, um, which I love. I love being a knitter. I think that it's the best thing to be. <laughs> um, okay, so this project comes back home and I start knitting. I decide to change the design, so I frog, this, I frog the sock, I start over, I am much happier now with the result, and then it's time to send it to Madeline Tosh. And so I thought that they were going to publish this at the beginning of June, because, I don't know, they just said June, so I assume it would be beginning of June. But then, they said, no, we're hoping to do it um, past mid-June. And so I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I have these two other patterns that are coming out and I also have to promote them and I don't know, but it wasn't working any other way. So I knew that I would have to publish these socks while we were in, during the trip that I made to Italy with my son. So the day that these socks came out, I call them I call them Rome if you want to, as in R O A M or Wander Around if you want to, which is a if you don't know, it's a it's the name of a really fun and lovely song by B52. It's one of my husband's favorite bands. And so, you know, I'll, I'm always roaming and I'm always on the go and exploring. So I thought it's a good name, Rome if you want to. And it's a good name for a, for a road trip inspired pattern. But then <laughs> the day that I have to publish these socks, it's the day that, it's the only day when I will be driving most of the day during this day, I drove from Cortina d'Ampezzo in the north of Italy, in the mountains, to Rome, uh, mid-west of Italy, and it took me over 10 hours. I would say it took me almost 11 hours to do that road trip. And while I was doing that road trip, I stopped at the gas station and I published the pattern from my phone because my computer's battery had died and I wasn't able to charge it properly. So I was roaming around while publishing the Rome, if you want to pattern, and I was driving to Rome, as in R-O-M-E in Italy. So it was, okay, there's something going on here. I didn't plan this, but it's like these socks, have a story to tell. I don't know what that story is, but there's definitely something about these socks that wants to be told or 
maybe this is like the ultimate representation of my lifestyle. I don't know, cables and roaming and sock knitting and losing stuff and friends that friends who do things for me. So that is the story of the socks. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you like the pattern because I really like it. And they look beautiful when you're wearing these socks. They are a longer process. I wouldn't say that you can finish this on a weekend at all, but they might as well be the loveliest pair of socks that you'll ever make. And hopefully if you make a pair, then they'll mean that there's some adventure coming for you. It doesn't have to be traveling. It can be anything that you find exciting. Um, maybe going to a yarn show close to you or meeting your friends over a weekend. Anyway, Rome, if you want to, you can find them in my shop on Ravelry. And then um, I'll also put a link to them in the show notes. You need one skein of sock yarn and these were made using 2.25 2.25 millimeter needles which i believe is a size two <clears throat> no it's a size one um yes so oh and by the way for these other fluffy pretty socks i used a 4.5 millimeter needle which is a us7 so just imagine how fast how much faster these guys knit up. But they, I think that they are both so nice. I don't think that I could, you know, run around in these socks. They, they are more, to me at least, they are more like a stay-at-home kind of socks. Although my mom will definitely wear these under her boots for sure. And I told you that this was a very sock heavy podcast today because I okay I didn't make any progress on the socks that I'm making for Nano but just in case you didn't see my previous uh, journal I am knitting a pair of socks for my son Mariano and I am at the heel and I didn't work on this since last journal but there are some socks there and last week i started organizing my studio here i'll tell you more about things that i'm doing but i also organized my works in progress which i thought i had only a couple and turned out that no i don't have just a couple of work in progress i have more in fact i had already started a pair of socks for my son um, remember when we went to italy i told you that nano didn't have many socks that we didn't know where they were so i started a new pair of socks for him well it turns out that i already had a pair of socks on the needles planned for him and these socks are the ones that replaced the the malintosh ones when i lost the project so when I lost that pair of socks, I only had a cardigan in progress with me, which is heavy, the red cable cardigan that I'll publish in the fall. And so I didn't have any lightweight things to knit. And if you remember, I met a friend there, Annelise, and she gave me some gifts and she gifted me this yarn, which I have a feeling I already showed you this is some Peruvian Highland wool from Safran Sass. I think it's the brand. So I had even finished one and I had started the second sock and I had completely forgotten about this project. And yeah, I, I brought it out again. So I am going to pack this and nano's socks and i will try to at least finish the purple ones when we go now on holidays tomorrow tomorrow we are going to go to the mountains for our annual ski trip 
and I plan to bring the fluffy <laughs> fibers collection to photo shoot there. So wish me luck. As you can imagine, or as I always say, I'm very insecure when having my photos taken. So it's likely that I'll find an excuse to delay it, but also I need to take the photos as, I, as soon as I arrive to the mountains because A, I don't, I am not bringing any other sweaters other than the ones I'm photo shooting. And so I can't wear them really until the photos are done and therefore I need to photo shoot them early and B, I usually burn my face with the wind and the sun when I am skiing and you guys don't want to see my face like that in a pattern photo. So I hope that I will, I hope that I will do it quickly as soon as I get there. And yeah, so those are my two socks in progress. Okay, then I did make a little bit of progress on the shawl that I am designing using the Magpie Fibers Plume. I talked about this yarn in my previous podcasts. This is a 25 gram skein of a cashmere blend by Magpie Fibers and I am designing a little a little eggplant colored chalet and I have to say that knitting lace weight yarn single stranded is difficult for me so I'm not making as much progress as I hoped but Mm. this is going to be amazing when I'm done <laughs> so I still have plenty of that 25 gram skein it doesn't look like much but trust me the skein wasn't much to begin with and so I still have more than half a skein to go so this is going to be feather light feather light for sure Yes, and then the other work in progress is uh, the golden cardigan that I showed in the previous episode. And it had some lace columns. My mom is helping me with that cardigan now. She's knitting the body, so I don't have it here to show you, but I do have something very exciting. So, I told you that I was organizing my studio and I've been thinking of adding my stash to Ravelry for a very long time. I used to have my stash all uploaded to Ravelry until probably 2015, 16. At that time, I started traveling a lot and every time that I came back, I came back with a lot of yarn. And sometimes I didn't have the time or the energy to work on cataloging the new acquisitions. And I, yeah, I fell off a cliff, I suppose. I suppose that when you stop updating your Ravelry stash, then it stops being accurate, right? So it stops showing you your totals, your, your proper totals or what you have really because that you have some things that aren't there and some things that aren't there aren't there anymore. So yeah, I stopped doing it. And at first I was still able to tell everything that I had, like, until 2016, I probably could tell everything that I had by heart, I remembered. But then it became this huge stash. Even when I donate a lot of my yarn to people who don't have access to luxurious yarns, 
or friends or my mom. Um, so I give away a lot of my yarn. Even then, it's too big for me to really use use it, the information. Uh, I can't really keep all that information in my head. So another thing that happened was that I sometimes was given yarn during an event by someone that, and it was yarn that I wasn't expecting, like a gift or someone who very generously wanted me to try their products and like gave me something. And I tend to be so focused when I work at the show that I can't really accept yarn, sit down, study what it is, or, you know, learn the story of this company and why they do what they do, their mission, their purpose, um, their source or their inspiration or their forte, you know, what the, what they are famous for. And in most of the times when this happens, I just put things in my suitcase and say, I will check it out when I get home. And then when I get home, home basically runs over me and pending work and the dog and my kids and everything. And I never really take a moment to see what are those gifts, you know? And I am super appreciative of yarn and dyers work i never ask for yarn that i never want to take yarn that i don't know if i'm going to use if you've ever offered me yarn i probably told you not a few times because i know how expensive it is i know how much work it goes into making yarn you know i am very aware of um how hard it is to earn a living and you know make money and I know that yarn is money so I don't want to take it for granted but it it it, it is hard for me right now to assimilate is that a word you know to acknowledge all the things that I have so I decided to take the time out of my schedule to organize this yarn. I think it's very important for my job. I think that it will open my brain to new ideas and new possibilities. And it will also honor the people who gave me this yarn. Uh, even if I don't talk about these yarns publicly, at least I will know what I was given. And I am taking a moment to read every tag and to really study every yarn that I'm putting back on the shelf. So I am taking out all of my yarns. Uh, I don't know if, no, I don't want to move the phone because the light now is going soon, um, um, but it's a lot of yarn. So I'm taking out a shelf, then I'm shooting all the yarns with my phone. So it's mediocre photos, not good photos. Then I take them to my desk and as I put them up on Ravelry, I put them back on the shelf. I, I have already done about 30% of my stash. I still have 60% to go. I didn't expect this to be a quick pro progress or a quick job. I, I think this is going to take about a month, um, but it's, it's working. It's working really well because I already started a new design inspired by this day that I had all the all the yarns out. So this is a new design that I am working on. And the inspiration came from a lot of places. Okay, let's see how it shows. It's a little bit wrinkled, but there you go. And of course, for those who know and recognize this yarn, this is the spin cycle yarn. Soon I will have to turn on the lights and the colors will not look this nice, but the sun is going fast. 
So this is spin cycle yarns. It's the first time I have spin cycle yarns on my needles. I had never purchased any of this yarn myself. I was gifted one skein of spin cycle last year um, at a gathering with friends. And then <laughs> I basically stole this yarn from my friend. I stole this yarn from my friend Lotte. So again, back in January, I am in New York and I am going to travel to Norway where I will meet my friend Lotte. And Lotte is a fan of all things pink. So Lotte says, I know you'll be in New York. Can you go to Do You Knit? and get me some of the, their special colorway of the spin cycle. Do You Need is a big store in New Jersey and they usually have exclusive colorways from different brands. Even at Hoki & Co, we made them some very hot pink bags exclusively for them. So I say, uh, I am so sorry. I won't have time to go to New Jersey from Times Square because it's not really that close and I will be working, but I will contact Karen, the owner of the store and see if she's coming to the show. Then I will ask her to buy some skeins for you and she can bring them to me. So I do that. And Karen says, oh, no, don't worry. I wasn't actually planning to go to the show, but I'll come and meet you. And then I will give you the yarn. And she was so nice that she wouldn't even let me pay for the yarn, even if it was for my friend. So I was very upfront and I say, hey, listen, this is not yarn for me. This is for my friend. Please let me pay. No, no, don't mention it. So I say, okay, thank you so much. I'll, I'll figure something out for you. And so... I, the day I have to meet Karen, I'm like, uh, where should we meet? I don't know where you'll be or what time can I see you? And Karen had met with Rachel from Moondrake. And Karen told Rachel, um, I have this yarn for Hohi. Are you going to see Hohi? And Rachel says, yes, I'm going to see her. So Rachel takes the yarn. But then I don't know if she forgot that she needed to see me and give me the yarn or if she thought that this was for me and I could get it in some other other opportunity. Rochelle went to the airport with my yarn and she went home with my friend's yarn. And so when I write to her, Rochelle, Karen told me you have the yarn. Rochelle says, I am at the airport. Your yarn is with me. Um, I'll send it somewhere. And I'm like, no, my friend, my friend can't get it in Norway without paying taxes. So it was a big uh, misunderstanding. So <laughs> I tell my friend, listen, sorry, I don't have the yarn that I had actually not purchased for you. <laughs> so that was going to be my gift for you. I was going to buy yarn for you and bring it to your home, but I don't have any gifts and I don't have your yarn. Actually, your yarn is with someone else somewhere else and of course no one cares and time goes by and then Rachel writes to me and says hey I have your yarn and I heard that your husband's coming so I can send it to your husband so when Charlie went to the States he brought the yarn you know the yarn stories are so much fun and every all these stories are because simply because I can't get yarn in Argentina but just imagine how boring it would be if People could just send me the yarn, right? I wouldn't have all these stories to share with you. So I'm actually kind of happy that it's so difficult for me to get the yarn because, you know, we go, you know, we go places to get the yarn. Anyway, Rachel sends Charlie the yarn that was to be supposed to be for Lotte. And so I get it and I look at it and I say, oh, it's so pink. It's so pink. I don't know that I'll ever that I would ever have picked this color, I will save it here for Lotte. In fact, I don't think I even acknowledged that the yarn for Lotte had arrived to my place until I had to put it in my stash and put it back on the shelf. And I say, hey, that's really nice. 
that's really nice yarn and this is supposed to be for Lotte but I think this, go this is going to be for me instead and so also I, r I really wanted to try this um, yarn because the if you haven't tried it before like I had um, what's special about this yarn is that the dyers dye the roving so the big chunks of wool they dye that and then they spin the wool that is already dyed and I find it lovely because I used to do that in 2011 to 15 I dyed roving for a local meal and we used to do similar stuff uh, not this nicely spun this is really a fantastic work that they do spinning and plying this yarn it looks really pretty much like um, hand spun yarn and the shop that I work for where we used to do this kind of work we could only manage to do a single ply and it was thicker like a worsted weight single ply um, it was still color changing yarn and it was absolutely fantastic because no one could get any self-striping yarn here in Argentina so you know seeing this job done by spin cycle really brings me back to that time the difference it's not just the um, the fact that it's so evenly spun but they also use two plies so they ply two strands together so you get these barber pole sections and then um, I am striping this with white so you don't get to see the full effect of the yarn you get to see the stripes but as you can see it changes colors as you um, as you continue knitting and I was talking about this sweater before and when I saw that Tracy had finished her own summer simple summer sweater super simple summer sweater I realized I also really like this sweater I wear mine a lot and I like the shape I like the fact that it has all these positive is so I thought okay why not why not design something that is um, sweatshirty style like this sweater instead of doing a circular yoke I decided to experiment with a staggered increases so we have different lines of increases and kind of like a raglan line over here so I have the sleeve and the body sections very properly separated and I even added a little bit of armhole shaping and but there are but there are some increases here and here so instead of increasing every two rounds on the same place in row one I increase here in on row three I increase here and on row five I increase here and then I stagger them I don't know if you if you guys understood the bat but I hope you did <laughs> if you did good job because <laughs> I didn't explain that very well um okay what else then I am very proud of the neck shaping. I share the process a little bit online. It doesn't look so even now because it hasn't been blocked, but it will look a lot better, trust me. And yeah, I came to this uh, obstacle when designing because I always like to add a few short rows to the neck so that the front is lower than the back. But we are working one row stripes so it was hard to figure out because just imagine this you start with pink right and work a short row and you stop there and you need the white the white is waiting at the beginning of the round right so when i get to the point where i have to turn the white is not there so let's suppose I join the white here. I cut and I join the white here. When I go back and I work another short row, the pink is still here. So 
an option would have been to carry the white with the pink, then do a short row and then knit with the white and carry the pink, and then knit with the pink and carry the white. But that would have left me an area here that has all this carried yarn and it would have meant also to have a bit of a hump here on the back and I didn't like that idea actually I didn't think that my, my tension is good enough for that to um, not show and I didn't know how I would do a wrap and turn there so instead I, I just cut the yarns and I re repositioned my knitting to start my short row, everything's in the pattern, but to start my short row, uh, let's see, here, and then I knitted, and then I slipped this, I slid the stitches back to the other end of the needle, like you would do on brioche, and I then knit with the white, and then I purled with the pink, and then I purled with the white, and so it worked, it worked, and I even, and I didn't have to do even short rows, there aren't any, like, short rows or German short rows, it's just really nice. These stitches over here are a bit stretched. I have to block this part, but I know it will look very well. It's because I wove in the ends there and I didn't do my neatest job, <laughs> but it will look okay. I am confident. Um, then, yeah, what else? So. I am using a second yarn, the white yarn or natural yarn, which I highly recommend. Let me go get a full skein of that. So I wanted a sport weight yarn to go with the with the spin cycle because they say this is a sport weight. I would say it's more like a fingering weight or a heavy fingering weight, but it worked great with the sport weight. This is a true sport weight. This yarn is by my friend Julie Aslin and it's called Journey Sport. I super recommend this guys. This is one yarn I would love you to try, uh, not just to support my friend Julie, but because there's something about it uh, I think it's the type of wool that is used. This is 80% Rambule and 20% Targi. This is North American fibers. And it's just spongy. Um, it's just very, very plump. Very, very plump. Let's see if you can see how lovely the twist is. This is a 56 gram skein and it carries 210 yards and the spin cycle skeins, they carry 200 yards. So I basically, because I did the neck band in just the white, I basically ran out of yarn at the same time. So if you want to make something that has same amount of yarn of two colors, the journey sport is a great match for the spin cycle. I actually think that these two yarns go very, very well together. I know that there's a pattern by Andre Maury that came out today, the tessellated pullover and vest, which looks super nice. And that pattern uses some spin cycle yarn and some solid. So if you don't want to get new solid and if you have journey sport in your stash, then try it out this pairs really really well with the spin cycle yarn. The color is latte and if you haven't heard of Julie Aslin yarns, Julie is a great person, good friend of mine and she's based in Montreal, Canada. She makes very pretty yarn and in very pretty colors. So this is my new work in progress. I am at a stage where I could definitely leave this behind with mom um, and have her finish the body with me, for me. I don't know. I don't 
I didn't prepare any other sweaters to bring with me on my trip. So I think I'm going to bring it with me. And since I am putting this project away in my new project bag, I want to show you guys for you to be ready because uh, these are not yet out, but they will be soon. These uh, little bags, I designed them to be launched when I am in Magpie Fibers. So they will be in at Magpie if you visit, but they will also be available on our website and they are not exclusive to Magpie or anything like that, but they have the Magpie logo. So this is probably my new favorite meeting bag that I make. I just adore this little thing. I have my whole sweater inside and I designed it with this pinching on the corners, which actually makes the bag close, kind of like a funnel style. I think I'll call them magpie patchwork bags. I think and I love them I really do we make them with our uh, little squares you know this is the kind the style of bags that we make in order to stay sustainable we use all the leftovers from previous bags that we make and we cut them into these squares and then we sew them to make these patchwork style project bags and I just, I'm in love. I really, I think I like this more than my papa. And that is so much to say because if you see my papa, if you see my papa bag, it's so old and so damaged and so well loved that you have to know how much I love this thing. I adore it. I don't know. I think I like this in one better because it kind of closes. I don't know. I really like it. No, I know. Pampa has their, its fans. Pampa is the Pampa. You know, it will, it can never be replaced, but at least mine, it won't be replaced. But yeah, this one, the, the patchwork bag, I shouldn't call it Magpie because then people will think that it's exclusive to Magpie. Um, I'll think of a name, funnel patchwork bag. I don't know if you can think of a name, let me know, but I might have to name it before I read your message. I don't know. And lastly, my last work in progress is Perry sweater. Um, it's going very well. I wish I had finished it um, so that I could leave it with her. Perry is not able to come with us on our ski trip. Um, so I have to leave her behind. This is the brioche pop sweater designed by Stephen West and i am making size five for perry she likes it very much when i try it on she seems to be happy and she wags her tail so i take that as a smile um i am using two different yarns this is ritual dyes priestess i think it's a dk weight dk weight merino yarn can't remember if priestess is the base or the color i think it's the base my mom is calling i'll have to go soon and then this is the malabrigo sock in black uh, I already divided for the sleeves and yeah by the way for the sleeves I am using these cute stitch holders that my friend Carson gave me which work really well we have also news about Perry I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but I posted a photo of her a couple of days ago. Perry has her own Instagram account. So you can find her at Pet of a Knitter, all together, Pet of a Knitter. And 
she is doing yarn reviews. So because I am doing all this work on my stash and cataloging and inspecting and getting to know a lot of yarns that I used to know in some way and now I know in a different way, I decided it was really cool that I could share with you some thoughts on these products. And also, I probably won't be able to do a review on everything that I have here, but it's also a good way to make use or give back to the makers, not just makers who give me their yarn for free, but also makers who I buy from, because there's a reason why I bought from them. I mean, I buy most of my yarn anyway. Um, so it's a good thing to, maybe I won't ever be able to design with these yarns. I know that I can't knit all this yarn in my life, but I would love to share with you what I have in, in a way that is not just bragging about, oh, I have all this yarn, because uh, that's not me, but in a way more like, I have this yarn, I think it's great for this, I kept it in my stash for these reasons, I think it stands out for these other reasons, and yeah, share, share things like this yarn is discontinued, but these are the properties, and if you want, you can replace it with this or that, or you can use it in this or that project. That is my goal for Paris Yarn Reviews. I think it, I think that it's um, when, I'm already talking about a lot of traveling and a lot of knitting patterns in my Hoji Lockat account. Then of course we have Hoji and Go for my project bags, but I felt like there wasn't really a place uh, where I could do these yarn reviews without, you know, having them get lost among all the other content that I put out. So I thought it was cute to have Perry be the one doing the reviews and to have this information there. I don't expect people to be so interested in yarn reviews, but at least I am having a lot of fun. I am having a lot of fun taking photos of my dog uh in the yarns that i talk about so yeah go check it out as i said she's on instagram is at pet of an eater and i hope you like her photos and she enjoys it very much uh just whenever i wrap her in yarn and i get ready to take photos i can see she's comfortable and she knows she's going to be pampered and she always likes to spend time with me so I know that she's happy doing so. And lastly, I'm going to go to the mountains, as I said. So a bit about our trip, maybe at the end of this uh, episode. Every year we go to a place called San Martín de los Andes. It's in the province of Neuquén in Argentina. And even though it's in the same country and it's not a lot further south than where we are now, it still takes us 17 hours to drive there at a fast speed. It's very far. We live in a very big country and we do this pilgrimage every year in order to ski in our mountains. So Argentina has lovely landscapes the most beautiful, uh, maybe, I don't know. I am partial because I am Argentine, but the, these landscapes are not really accessible to me. I have to travel for a long time to get there. And so we only do it once a year, most of the times. We drive there because once you get there, you need the car to go to the ski resort and back. We don't stay at the ski resort because one, there aren't, there isn't really a ski village in Chapelco big enough for everyone there. And two, there are a couple of places, but it's super expensive to stay there. So we actually drive up the mountain and back to the valley every day. And so we need the car. Um, yeah, so 
because of that. We drive because of uh, the fact that we need the car. But I would, trust me, I would love to fly there. Renting a car is also very expensive because there's not a lot of cars uh, available. So yeah, we would drive. But it's not the most pleasant drive. It's not a really nice road trip that we enjoy. It's mostly crossing the desert and there aren't many places to stop and it's just really boring. So I'm getting ready for to do that tomorrow. We're gonna try to do it in one go. My husband and I are going to take turns and try to leave very early in the morning and get there by the end of the day to sleep. When we go, it's the four of us and we meet there with my cousins and nephews and a few friends. But this year, my eldest son Mariano is not coming because he, um, Mariano is a very good student and he is really interested in science and he's been competing in chemistry and biology Olympics during his uh, high school years. And I'm so proud. Mariano was, Nano, Mariano, was uh, chosen to represent his school in Israel, he won a scholarship for a STEM or science oriented summer school in Weizmann Institute in Israel. So he is leaving on Monday. We leave tomorrow. He stays with his grandparents for three days and then he's flying to Israel for three weeks to study abroad. And yeah, it's um it was kind of a surprise. We only learned a couple of months ago that he was, how do you say it in English? That he was suggested or a candidate for this scholarship. And yeah, he won, he earned it. And so unfortunately this happens while um, the schools in Buenos Aires are in their winter break of course, because he can't be away from school for that long. So he can't come and ski with us, but we are super proud. Um, we know he would love to be with us too, but he's happier and rightfully so to be studying his uh, beloved sciences. So yeah, just the three of us this year uh, going to the mountains and I will need socks thinking of him. Um, I don't have much else to show you, just a little heads up. When I come back in a week, I am going to start getting information ready for you guys to start thinking of our annual fall knit along. As always, the signups are going to start in August and the knit along will start in September. There will be new patterns for that. The Fluffy Fibers collection is coming out in August, so you'll be able to knit that. Um, all of my patterns are allowed. And yeah, we made a logo for this year's knit along and we'll have project bags uh, sold by Hoki and Co. And yeah. And there will be lots of prizes. We are taking sponsors. And yeah, just so that you can put that in your calendar, sign up start in August, and then the it along will start in September. Start thinking about what you'll make. And that's it. See you next time, guys. Bye.